Good morning. What are the consequences of disobedience to God? We're at Jeremiah 9, verses 10 to 16 this morning. I will take up a weeping and wailing for the mountains and for the dwelling places of the wilderness, a lamentation, because they are burned up, so that no one can pass through, nor can men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the birds of the heavens and the beasts have fled, they are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a den of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? Why does the land perish and burn up like a wilderness so that no one can pass through? And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law which I said before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it, but they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts, and after the Baals, which their fathers taught them. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the Gentiles, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them until I have consumed them. Well, I think you know it. Obedience is indeed part of the total picture. God anticipates that his people will sustain his values and build up the kingdom of unselfishness that he's, he's laboring to bring along on planet Earth. This is a rebel planet, but God's reforming it. There are clear consequences listed here in our text. Verse 13 has the charges. They've, they have forsaken God's law and they have not obeyed uh, his voice. Verse 14 tells us, again, that they have followed their own heart and they've really set up their own religion, Baal worship. They've set up a system of idolatry. All these steps are intentional and premeditated. All these steps arose only because they intentionally chose to reject God's revealed truth. They could have had blessing, but they've chosen their own ways. And one of the ways he's going to help them is by feeding them wormwood. Now, wormwood was a, a very bitter-tasting herb. Isn't it interesting how people constantly seem to desire to taste bitter things? They want to taste forbidden things, and they're, they're hesitant to taste the good things. People are hesitant to trust God. But God still urges us in his word to taste and see that the Lord is good, Psalm 34. But people hesitate. They wonder, what are the strings attached if I do what God says? Well, friends, there are strings attached to bad things, and there's strings attached to good things. Everything has some kind of strings attached. Do you think you're going to be clever enough and find something with no strings attached to it, and it's just going to work out wonderfully? Where did you get that idea? Now, God never forces us. And he offers us his blessings as gifts. He guides us sometimes by chastenings and punishments, like any good parent sometimes does. But he would rather open his hands in blessing. But now when we join him, there are certain things that he requires. Judah's injustice and idolatry and self-service are not compatible with God's ways. So he's going to continue to try to teach them as long as they can still hear it, as long as there's still time. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your great love for us. Even when we see you chastening and dealing firmly with your children, we know that it comes from love. So Lord, help us, be with us, be our guide. Even when we go astray, please help us, Lord. Have mercy and, and please help us to go in the right way. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Bible tells us the truth. God is the Lord and he does not change. And disobedience on our part triggers a learning experience. So there's different kinds of learning experiences. Some of these are the ones we don't want. But there's free choice still, and God's going to try to recover his people from degeneracy. May you and I be part of that recovery. Have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus.